At Five Star Bank, community is at the heart of what we do. Every day we strive to have thoughtful solutions for our customers and help our communities prosper. Honest dialogue about the issues affecting the region is vitally important to that prosperity. We are proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. Higher education has long been thought as a ticket into the middle class and the American dream. But the increasing cost of college has many families fearing that the promise of a college education as part of the American dream is slipping from their grasp. Some students and families have even given up, assuming that there is no hope and no help. Armed with new programs, the California Student Aid Commission is trying to turn around that perception and has launched a new initiative to increase access to higher education and the prosperity it promises. Joining us today on Studio Sacramento, our California Student Aid Commission Executive Director, Diana Fuentes Michelle, Sacramento City College Dean of Learning Resources, Dr. Rhonda Rios Kravitz, and a Sacramento City College student, Donis De Leon. So, what is this California Student Aid Commission doing that people need to know about? Well, the legislature has recently passed several new initiatives to help college expenses be paid by students and their parents. The Middle Class Scholarship Program, which was recently enacted, will help students who attend the University of California and the California State University pay for their tuition costs in 2014-15, and we will be assisting them a middle class scholarship. Now, you know, the middle class, uh, typically mm -hmm. those in the middle class feel like they're left out. So, what exactly is available for middle class families? Well, students who fill out the free application for financial aid, the FAFSA, mm -hmm. and submit their GPA grade point average up to $150,000 a year. $150,000. So, this is not just 000. for a low income program. Though. No, this is going to be really to assist to partially pay for the tuition cost of students who are in the middle class. And those students who are attending the public universities, UC and CSU, will get some assistance beginning next year. And, and, and how much, again, can you get from this grant program? Well, it's going to depend largely on the student's financial uh, need, but also there will be a percentage over the next three years. They'll get up to 40 percent of their uh, tuition and fees covered at the university and the state university. That will largely depend on the number of students who apply and the uh, amount of money that the legislature will provide. But it's going to be phased in over a period of three years. And, and how is this different? Just give us kind of a baseline. How is this different than what um, has been available recently? Well, the state's Cal Grant program, which is an entitlement program for high school seniors, mm -hmm. students who fill out the FAFSA and submit their GPA get some level of financial assistance up to about $90,000 a year. The Cal Grant program is also for students attending selected private institutions as well, both public and private. So the way this is different is that the income level is higher. Right, but Rhonda, how, how is this going to matter to the students you're serving at the community college? This matters significantly for mainly my dreamers. Um, the dreamers are our migrant students, uh, our undocumented migrant students. Slow down. The, the dreamers. Now, this is related to one of these initiatives called the DREAM Act? Exactly. Uh, share with us what exactly is the DREAM Act? Well, there, in uh, 2001, we saw AB 540 passed, and it was signed by Gray Davis. And 2001 gave students the right, who were dreamers, to pay in-state tuition. What's a dreamer? And a dreamer is a student, has to meet a number of criteria. One of the criteria is that they've had to go to high school for three years in California. So that three years can be anywhere in 9 through 12. It doesn't have to be consecutive. Mm -hmm. They've had to um, graduate or had a GED. Um, they've had to be enrolled in an institution of higher education and they have to be transitioning into citizenship. So they have to meet those criteria. Now, so these are for, this program is for students uh, of families that are undocumented? Right. Okay. And so what we see at City College are a number of students with that who are able to pay in-state fees. But until the Cal Grant program and until the BOG fee waiver came into place, which just happened with the California DREAM Act, our students had to pay fees, whereas in the community colleges, approximately 75 
to 80 percent of students received bog fee waivers so they did not pay their fees but our dreamers had to pay fees and so it made college much more difficult and so with the passage of the California Dream Act we're seeing an ability for our dreamers. Now Donna, uh, have you, you've been a beneficiary of the Dream Act, correct? Yeah. Okay, what's your story? Tell us, uh, tell mm. us about you. Uh, right after high school, um, I had a quit a semester of college. Mm -hmm. I said, um, I couldn't afford it. I mean, my mom, you know, they don't make enough money. The only way they can help me out is like morally. Mm -hmm. So I had a quit a semester, I'll find a job. I got a job in construction, so I had a, um, no move to San Francisco, but travel to San Francisco mm -hmm. every day, Monday to Friday, working 10 hours every day. The entire semester for me to save up some money for the spring semester to be able to go to college because it was it, it, it is very expensive when you know you know you're you're 18 you're 17 your parents can give you a dollar to you know pay college so everything has to come out of your pocket and it's very difficult now now you went to Hiram Johnson High School I did, right yes. and, and where are you going to college at right now Sacramento City College okay and yeah. ultimately what is it that you want to do I want to major in biochemistry mm -hmm. uh, my goal is to become a physician and mm -hmm. You know, get into a medical school one day. All right. Hopefully, yeah. Okay. And and so for students like Donna's, mm -hmm. this program has opened up an opportunity that makes the difference between being able to continue on or maybe get in at all to college. Well, the commission is administering the California Dream Act for <laughs> AB 540 students, which basically means that if a student went to a California high school for at least three years, and graduated, which means they had to pass the high school exit exam and qualify for either a public or private institution that participates in the Cal Grant program, then they too receive Cal Grant funds just like every, any other student and the same criteria in terms of qualifying financially apply. So this for the first time has allowed students to apply for Cal Grants as well as institutional aid which is basically the Board of Governors fee grant program at the community colleges. So, so help us understand the size of the problem that we're looking at. I mean, some of the statistics, you know, roughly half of um, Latino and African American students don't graduate from high school right now. Mm -hmm. Help us understand what is the relationship between that lack of success in graduating high school and the availability of financial aid resources to get a, a higher education certificate or, or degree? Maybe I can share a little bit about myself, about okay. my experience, because um, it was really hard for me to graduate from college. First of all, because none of, uh, first of all, my mom is a single mom. My, my dad died when I was nine. So my mom never went to college, she never went to school. She learned how to write her name when she was 26 years old. So that's, you know, you don't have the background, you know, that your parents know about school, you know, they don't know anything about school. All they can help you, all they know is like, is that you have to go to school. You know, they're like, I don't know why, I don't know for what, I don't know why, but you have to go to school. Mm -hmm. Period. You know, so it is really hard for us sometimes to, to relate to someone that can help us out. Um, in my case, it was really hard for me because, like, when I came to United States, I went straight to um, high school and never went to middle school. One of my biggest uh, barriers was uh, learn the uh, language. You know, it was very difficult. Plus, pass the exit exam from from high school was a huge deal for me. It was really difficult, but tell I us did. How, tell us how. First of all, because I was didn't know very well the language yet. You know, mm -hmm. it took me a while to to master it. You know, to get to know things. You know, writing writing is a big issue for people like me. They came to United, they comes to the United States without knowing the language. So my grammar was horrible. Like maybe still not the best, but you know, it's a big issue. Um, plus, um, it's not a lot of support and sometimes in high schools. You know, there's not a lot of support to the uh, to the students who's um, that don't know the language. Tell us, uh, are your friends, the friends you went to high school with, mm -hmm. okay? If you were to take 10 of your friends, how many of them are in college like you are? Two, three. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And where are the rest of them at? Um, I I know one of them. Um, many of them got deported. I know that for sure. Um, mm -hmm. One of them, he died actually like three years ago, like right after graduating from high school, right when I got my first job mm -hmm. after high school to pay my college. 
he died. I know he was in a, um, was in a car accident, but he got involved in, you know, with the wrong people. And he was living by himself here in the United States. Let, let, me, let me ask you something else. If you were talking to all of the people in this state and in this country who are making the laws or who are making the big decisions, what is it that they need to know about you and your friends that you don't think that they understand? I think uh, they, need, they need to know that we work really hard, you know, because we don't have the academically background. And it's very difficult for us to know or to get to know new things, especially the culture here. But um, it's, uh, it's very difficult. It's just... And what would you want them to do? Help. You know, it's, it's very clear that we need help. You know, we're here struggling academically, most likely, but financially. Rondo, what, what, are they, what are you guys doing at the city college level, at the community college level, to give the type of help? I think there are that many Donis things, but about. I think one of the things we're working now is creating pathways with the high schools, because that pathway is really key and important so that we you know, look at what's happening in the high schools and really engage students at a high school level to come to college. Mm -hmm. I think what we see with Donis and what Donis is talking about is that oftentimes you do not have bilingual uh, personnel in the high schools. Um, we have parents who are deeply committed to education on the Latino side and on the African American it, isn't side. Isn't it also true though that you also don't have bilingual personnel no offense, mm -hmm. director, mm -hmm. in positions of authority by and large, and that exactly. you're kind of like the exception and, <laughs> <laughs> and in the a very college, exceptional right. exception. But yeah, but I think what the, and I agree with you, I think the, the key issues in the high schools is that we don't have sufficient counseling. Right. And the counseling that is there is directed mm -hmm. at the students that are having greatest difficulty. And the students that are in the high schools don't have the information they need in order what the steps are to get to college, and so they get very frustrated in terms of their futures because they don't see one. And so our job is to make them understand and their parents that college is possible. One of the things we're doing here in Sacramento is working directly with the Mexican Consulate, San Amigos, uh, the business organization of Latinos, and we're organizing an effort to get to the high schools. And we've done two successful steps to college uh, programs now in February of every year when students are applying for financial aid. And we're bringing the families, we're bringing the families to the consulate so that they understand the process. So. What, are, what are the most common misperceptions of these families when they walk into one of these events? What are the misperceptions that you, usually you run into and that you've got to combat? I don't think it's misperceptions. Mm -hmm. I think it really is much more a structural issue on the part of the institutions. Really? Um, mm -hmm. For me, you know, we, Donis, uh, it belongs to an organization that we have at Sacramento City College called the Dream Team and Alianza. Um, the purpose of this group is really to go out into the high schools, to really create some conferences where we talk with parents and high school students. We have our college students talking to the high school students to let them know that college is possible. Um, we let the parents know that we will hear their voices. I think what we see in the high schools many times is that when parents try to talk to um, the administrators or counselors um, on the high school level, they're really not understood. And um, it, many times our families have to move or they have um, have lost their jobs. I mean, stability is not a constant issue for many of our families. And so mm -hmm. if you're moving from, from college or high school to high school or place to place, um, you don't have the connections that I think are really keen, critical, that you see in a middle class or an upper class family. Mm -hmm. You know, our students also don't have opportunities to gain uh, summer experiences, which are so powerful in helping you succeed in college. So how do we create programs that are gonna enhance um, the um, needs of our students in the high schools and the middle schools and really starts with so, so, you know, there is a, a, there's a growing debate though in this country. When you all talk about college, mm -hmm. um, I, I, it makes me wonder what exactly you mean by that because a uh, story recently in USA Today talks about how right. that a, um, a four-year college degree, in some cases, for instance, in the state of Tennessee, there, there was a study done mm -hmm. that said that um, in the first year of employment, mm -hmm. actually a two-year community college it's degree is higher paying than a four-year degree. And then for a number of jobs, Bill Bennett, the former U.S. Secretary of Education, 
wrote a book recently where he criticizes what he considers to be the college industrial complex mm -hmm. and says that there are 14 million jobs waiting mm -hmm. where it is that you need more of a technical type of mm -hmm. certificate, which mm -hmm. community yeah, college offers, offers, but that we're shoving people into saying that if you don't get a four-year degree, you're a failure. Where are you guys at on that? Well, I think the message needs to be that all students are going to need some form mm -hmm. of post-secondary education beyond high school. So I think we're talking semantics in some respects, but when we're talking to high school students, we need to tell them they need to plan for their future, and they're going to need some career opportunities that are going to be connected to technical training if they have the ambition to be a construction worker or a physician assistant. Um, but there also is going to have to be a conversation about what it's going to take in order to become a doctor, like Donis wants to be. Mm -hmm. So y you have to have the students understand that they're going to have to have some level beyond high school. High school graduation is the first step to an effective career that's going to give them a sufficient wage which will allow them to support their families. So our message to the students is that they're going to need to graduate from high school and they're going to have to have training and education beyond. And the Cal Grant program funds both the traditional four-year program as well as career education. Which is key, but we know that by 2020, 67 percent of jobs will require some form of, of college education, be it a certificate, an AA or an AS degree, or um, you know a higher level degree. So students are, are really recognizing this. I think we're also seeing the language change in high schools so that we now talk about... What do you mean by that? We, we don't just talk about the pathway to college, we talk about the pathway to college and career. Mm -hmm. And with career, we're talking about many of the programs that we have, the career tech programs at the community colleges. What we're also seeing is that college gives students an ability to think critically, you know, to analyze problems, and what they're realizing is the ability to write um, is so important in any of the jobs they have. So when we work with uh, the business community outside, we ask them, what is it that you need um, in the positions that you're holding? And what we're seeing is that those college degrees are really key and really helpful in creating an educated okay. workforce. Okay, but you know, from, from, from a skeptic's perspective, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there are <clears throat> hundreds of thousands of college graduates and people who've dropped out of college mm -hmm. who are saddled with these mm -hmm. big student loans out here. And so, you know, this new availability of all this money, mm -hmm. um, right now, I've heard it described that, you know, having a college loan is worse than having um, a loan shark mm -hmm. relationship with a mobster mm -hmm. because, you know, you might be able to move away from a mobster, but, you, but you'll never get away from a guaranteed student loan. Well, well and in California, though, you, you have less debt. I know that nationally there's a, definitely a college debt problem. But in California, because of the Cal Grant program, a recent study showed that our average debt in California is about $17,000 compared to the national average of about $26,000. But, but what about all of these places? Uh, uh, help, help the public understand mm -hmm. what it is that is going on right now because there are a lot of places where a young man like mm -hmm. Donis might go to if he wasn't going into medicine and was going into more of a technical field mm -hmm. he might go to a college with lousy graduation rates mm -hmm. and frankly virtually no job placement. Mm -hmm. Well the California legislature recently passed legislation which narrows the number of institutions who can participate in the Cal Grant program mm -hmm. because they instituted standards for the first time which require a level of graduation rate better than 30 percent and a default rate of better, less than 15 percent. Better than 30 percent? That's the first start in the conversation. Our college and universities in terms of their graduation rates in the public sector, particularly with the CSU, on average, you know, you'll see some institutions in the 60s, 65 percent, 70 percent. The University of California has an exceptionally high graduation rate because they are extremely selective. So I think... But you have to understand that from a public mm -hmm. perspective, a 30 percent graduation rate, uh, you know, at least 60 is a D, mm -hmm. 70 is mm -hmm. a C, Correct. using sort of, mm -hmm. standard. you know, right. standard right. grades, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But a 30 yeah. percent is a low F. Correct. And the commission began that conversation uh, with the legislature to try to bring focus to the need to provide better student support. Many students, financial aid is the entry. Mm -hmm. It's not the 
all-encompassing answer to access to higher education. You have to have counseling and you have to have the ability to tutor students, particularly our students who are having difficulty in writing and basic math. So let's, so let's go to uh, where it is that families need to be. Mm -hmm. um, for the, the families who may be first generation, mm -hmm. generation or, mm -hmm. or really are sort of completely flustered by the higher educational system, mm -hmm. Give us a roadmap. Tell us what to do. Where, where, where should the parents go? Where should the students go? Well, students have opportunities in the college environment, either college career environment on their campuses. I always encourage... Now start back in high school, though. In high school? Yeah, start well, back. Well, what parents need to know is that when their student is in middle school, are they prepared to enter high school having the ability to read and having the ability to do basic math? I always tell folks that I counsel that they're children should be reading by the third grade and they should be doing basic math. By the eighth grade they should be able to take algebra. Those are the two gateways if you're talking to a parent that they need to have their student be at that grade level attainment. When they get to high school the A to G pattern which most middle class parents understand is what students need to take in order to qualify for the universities. State, UC and any of the private students. Right, but, but where it, I'm a parent. Mm -hmm. I think though, I, where it do I go? even earlier. Okay. For mm -hmm. me, what we see um, with research is that we really need access beginning at the preschool level. Not, um, we, we traditionally talk about K through 20 or K through 16, mm -hmm. but it is that preschool level where students really gain an opportunity to be able to succeed. But at every level, I think we need to involve parents to say, this is what preschool can do for you and this is the expectations that we have for your child. Then when the child goes through K through three, these are the expectations and these are what we um, have for your child and what your child needs to meet. So at every level, a parent is involved and knows what um, is going on. Because what we see, if you are not successful at the third grade level, we can almost predict whether you'll graduate from Okay, let's fast forward though. Mm -hmm. So I'm a parent of a 16 year old. Right. I need to start looking at school. I can't afford to send my son here yes. to college. Okay, what it, what's my step? Where, if I walk into Hiram Johnson High School mm -hmm. tomorrow mm -hmm. right. with my son, mm -hmm. who do I talk to? Where do I go? What website do I, mm -hmm. I well, you can go to calgrants.org at the mm -hmm. California Student Aid Commission, and we have information there on the availability of all financial aid. You know, our csac.ca.gov website provides information both on loans and grant aid. And also, we have a series of workshops through our Cash for College effort that we sponsor with the high schools, 600 across the state of California, where you go in by zip code and you put your local zip code into our uh, database and we then give you a list of workshops that are in your local area. Incidentally, it's true that a lot of money goes unclaimed, right, in California? That's I think a, a lot of money goes unclaimed because students don't fill out the FAFSA by March 2nd and ah. we need deadline. to encourage them to file by the deadline. Mm -hmm. If they don't apply, they won't qualify. But I think what you're also seeing like with community colleges um, is that we go into the high schools. So we have outreach workers that go into the high schools and work with the students at that level to tell them what you know, can happen with at the college level. Mm -hmm. We offer Senior Friday, Senior Saturdays, where parents can come and we invite the parents to teach them about what are the opportunities, what are the financial aid opportunities for their students. Um, we're not necessarily saying they have to come to a community college, but the community college becomes a very important entry point mm -hmm. for students who really um, come from low-income backgrounds. Right. And Donna, uh, Tell us, uh, what's next for you? Next you know? for me, it's getting all my grades, you know, getting all, passing mm -hmm. all my classes, uh, taking my life to the next level. Since now I'm available, so I can't do it, you know. All right. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you when you uh, become a physician. Uh, Absolutely. Discover the next cure for, the, for a major disease or something <laughs> like that. Absolutely. Thank you all for, uh, sharing this information and uh, good luck. Well, that's our show. Thanks to our guests and thanks to you for watching Studio Sacramento. I'm Scott Syfax. See you next time right here on KVIE.
At Five Star Bank, community is at the heart of what we do. Every day we strive to have thoughtful solutions for our customers and help our communities prosper. Honest dialogue about the issues affecting the region is vitally important to that prosperity. We are proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. All episodes of Studio Sacramento, along with other KVIE programs, are available to watch online at kvie.org slash video.